This week at the nation's capital, a long overdue congressional gold medal will be presented to dozens of women well into their 80s, 90s, some even a century old. The award is going to the surviving workers of World War II. There were some six million women in all who performed an exceptional service and earned a nickname that's lasted generations. And we did it as fast as we could, but I imagine it took, man, I'm sure half a day to do a whole side. Yeah. At the age of 99, well, Susan King still wields a rivet gun like she did building warplanes at Baltimore's Eastern like Aircraft Factory. Was it hard work? No. And the gun was light, wasn't this heavy? It wasn't that heavy. This is a good That's heavy. five pounds. Mrs. King was 18 and among some 20 million women credentialed as defense workers, <laughs> filling the jobs men left behind once drafted to fight in World War II. Tens of thousands of women are already at work in aircraft. Known as Rosie the Riveters, these can-do women were recognized through an iconic image promoting the war effort, sporting that signature red polka-dotted bandana. I'm Rosie. I was a riveter, and I worked on the wing section of an airplane. But once the war was over, while veterans received ticker tape parades and medals, the Rosies were ignored. Only decades after the war did their service become appreciated. Why did it take this long? I think there are two parts to that. The first part is because they're women. I don't think Historian Gregory Cook produced and directed Invisible Warriors, a soon-to-be-released documentary shining light on those even more forgotten. I don't think white women have ever gotten their just due as Rosie's for the work they did during World War II. And then we go into black women. Mrs. King is the only black woman I've met who understood her role and significance as a Rosie. Most of these women have gone to their graves, including my mother, not understanding her historic significance. Mrs. King joins a short list of surviving war workers devoting the rest of their lives to educating generations behind them including her own daughter, Camille. Did you have to put pants on? Yeah, I'd put pants on, but prior to that time, women didn't wear pants in the streets. The Glen L. Martin Aviation Museum in Maryland has preserved that collective memory. We were making destroyers. Along with another sacred site in Richmond, California, where 98-year-olds Marion Suze and Jean Gibson regularly hold court at the Rosie the Riveter National Historic Park, which sits on the shoreline where battleships were once made. You know, we lived in a time of history that is past, and it was a good time to live. People trusted one another, and everybody worked together to get that war over with. I mean, everybody did something. For her, it was a family effort. My two sisters were welders, and my mother was a spray painter. Her sister pushed to recognize the Rosies, resulting in an invitation to the White House in 2014, after then Vice President Biden got a letter from her. As we honor this More recently, there is the occasional celebrity treatment, as Jean Gibson enjoyed at a Golden State Warriors game last month. But here's the takeaway. The Rosies were leaders of change. Well, it gave me a backbone. And you know, there was a lot of men who still were holding back on this. They didn't want the women out of the, out of the kitchen. The one thing that I'd like to add to the change of your life is that I wasn't afraid to try new things after that. Uh, I got my pilot's license in, uh, when I was in my 40s. I went to college. And uh, I got my AA degree when I was 64. Susan King did too, using her $55 a week factory check to earn a teaching degree. Then her daughter followed in her footsteps. In my mind, I was not a factory worker. I was doing something to make money so I wouldn't have to be a maid. Yeah, there were some badass women, they were. And they were all raised to be ladies, which is a term that's fallen out of favor these days. But they were all ladies, but they were some badass women. Pure and simple. Pure and simple. Without them, of any color, where would the war effort have been? The war would have definitely taken longer to win.
So when the Rosies descend on the nation's capital Wednesday, they bring with them the knowledge of their lifetime of service. We must call upon women. And a revolutionary spirit that helped make their generation great. So why is it important for you to be among those 30 women who are going to Washington, D.C. to receive that medal? I guess I've lived long enough to be, to be black and important in America. And that's the way I put it. If I were not near 100 years old, if I were not black, if I had not done these, I would have never been gone to Washington. Yeah, the change that has occurred, some 600,000 women of color were part of the six million that, were, that entered the workforce after men went off to fight. And just think about that. Well, think about everything that they did. It's felt. also, as they point out, and as you point out in the piece, it's the change that also sparked for women in let me go to college and get other jobs. Get my pilot's license. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. really incredible, great yeah. story.